I shoot in RAW, so when I double click my image, it opens up in camera RAW. As you can see, I've already worked slightly on this, I just alter the highlights. Not too much because I'm going to come back in once I've done some more minor adjustments. I open my image and it opens up in Photoshop. The first thing I want to do is crop. I don't want the full image. I, I don't really like her legs so I'll take it up there and bring it in a little bit more. More of a square. Then I duplicate layer and I want to name this eyes zoom in because as you can see I'm going to work on her, her eyes the first thing I do is select dodge tool make sure it just fits in her eyes and doesn't go over too much. Eight exposure. Always work on mid tones. It would be tempting to use highlights or shadow, but you use mid tones. It gives a better effect. Just brush your eyes a couple of times. So by holding your left key down. Now once I've lightened her eyes, I will go to the burn tool. There's lots of ways to do this. This is the way I actually do my eyes to make them pop. But again, about eight to 10 exposure, like not too much. Then this time you're working on the shadows. And you just want to go round the eyes and the pupil so basically it's just the shadows and the eyelashes just on the edge there again now once that's done I make a new layer and I'm going to name this Iris. You go back to your tool menu and you collect the eyedropper tool. I'm going to zoom in just a fraction. I still want both her eyes in frame but the eyedropper tool and I want to pick up the light blue, bluey grey of her eyes. We'll go to the brush. This has to be small, like three pixels, no, too big. One or two pixels, I'll try one. Then a soft brush, and all I'm going to do is, it doesn't matter if you can't see them all, but all I'm doing is just marking lines different lengths, spacing them where the light blue is on the line. And same on this one. I would only usually do this if it was a, a somebody had paid for a portrait or if it was for a competition then it's worth the extra effort just to then I get the eyedropper tool again and I select the darker colour and do the same on the dark.
not as much look at it went too far then so I just got to edit undo brush tool and it would take away the last thing you did just do a few on that now once that's done you can go to adjustments levels and push to make make it a lot brighter but obviously like just you just see stripes so then you go to filter blur gaussian blur and you alter it to where you just lose you just lose it lines and you fit on screen only a slight difference but you can actually see by turning clicking on the eye there turns it on and off so you can actually see you can't see too good just zoom in a little bit but you can actually see the colour of the eyes you can keep altering it uh, if you want it brighter. Again, uh, image adjustment levels. And you uh, take it up even more. So, in effect, that is making the eyes pop. Now, I'm going to add. Another layer, name this blemish. I'm going to zoom in, go to the spot healing brush, and any just slight blemishes are like. marks that you don't really want on a photo on. Now for under her eyes, here, here, and on the mouth here, even the highlights showing here, the another layer, always better to work on layers because they can be altered individually. Uh, name this one Blemish 2 which is we're going to be under her eyes here to get the now for this one I use the healing brush tool not the spot healing the healing brush not too big hardness zero spacing 1%. You can actually alter the where your brush goes and but you usually pick up. I'll just test that one. That's right. So what you do is you click to select its options on a Mac. And then if you just brush, you can see it's actually picking up the skin tone. From lower down the face and it gives it a more natural look than just cloning or spot healing. Dark, put the dark up instead. But like I say, all you do if you make a mistake, you go undo, undo healing brush until I don't want to lose that shadow. Then same again over here. All you're doing is just 
in fact I'll select from over here because there's a lot of highlights on the face on this side so I'll actually just we go to the side and just I don't want to remove all the crease but most of the crease we just Number to view the on screen, and there you see I've removed some of the highlights. Now this is where I go. I click on the top image as. And I go back. If you're going to filters, you can go back into camera raw. And this is where I'm going to work. Make a face look a bit brighter. A bit more contrast. Get rid of the lights. Get rid of the shadows. Add on a bit of white. Black. Now, clarity, I want to rise sharp. And you can go up to these tools up here and paint it in. But I find that it's long winded, it's over. So, what I do, I just clarity, then I press OK. Then I duplicate the layer. I go back in to camera roll and then clarity I bring it back down to give the skin a softer tone. And again I can oops not good. That's supposed to be above all these, and then it's on them. Now, once this is on, make a layer to the side. I take my brush, make sure it's on black. Once the black brush has been selected, make it slightly bigger. I want the skin to stay looking soft, so I'll leave that as it is. And all I do is remove the eyes, so the eyes are sharp. And not all the mouth, but just the centre of the mouth. That's slightly too much, so I'll take it to the white, take it to 50% and brush some of it back in, flip back to 100%, flip it back to black, make the brush sound slightly larger because I want to sharpen some of the hair. And I'm going to click back on eyes. You can do it on a separate layer or but I'm going to select. I 
zooming. Finding nail van is quite distracting, so I'm going to select the chair. If I select, once I've done a few, select similar and it will actually pick up all all the nails. This one down here just needs a slight adjustment. It's not picked up on the shadow bit. Minus to take it back down. Once you've got the nail selected, what do you think will work? Then you go to image, adjustments, view and saturation. And if I look at a lipstick, I want the nails to look similar. I'll go to the top image. It will still be selected. It won't show through all the layers. You have to do it on the top layer. If you do it on the, the layer I was going to do it on, it won't show up because obviously you've not taken the As you can see, that is the colours by just moving this slider. The saturation you can take down so they're not as overpowering. And I want it more of a pinky, a dusky pink. And keep taking it down until you get press OK. View. Put on the screen. Deselect. And as you can see, a nails now match a lipstick. Don't look as overpowering. Once I'm happy with what the image is like, then I go back in to camera raw. And what I'm going to do now is put the shadows in. I click on graduate filter. If you press on the minus, Press on that and it should send them all back to the beginning. It didn't then, but for some reason. But I just click and then I get the exposure. Get everything I want, and then if you do it to each corner first. And if you do it this way, you can actually alter. And there you go. Now, if you don't want the top as heavy, then you can take that down and it, it won't alter the other four corners. It will only alter this that I'm doing now and the one will be the same. I'm going to bring this further in. Do that a little bit darker, and then this one will be the same. You click on there, this is the image.
and that is the final image. If I go to if I merge the layers down, I wouldn't normally merge the layers down without saving it or anything first. But that's one. That's the original and that's the edited version.